Hi, I'm Michael Friedman, founder and president of Master Massage. I want to warn you or apologize to you or something because when I reviewed the video you're about to see, it was clear that I got a little too excited perhaps in describing our passion for perfection and some of the frustrations we face dealing in this thumbnail photo world we all live in today. You just can't see all of the good or all of the bad in these very tiny little shots. So my attempt here in these following minutes is just to honestly communicate with you quietly, person to person, some of the details that make our product great and how they compare to some of the other things that are actually out there. So if it seems that I'm getting a little too excited, please forgive me. It's just the passion for honesty and perfection coming out. Thank you. You clicked on the button, why a master? I'm gonna show you now the difference. Some of the things that you can't see in the uh, thumbnails that you're shopping with, but that are so vitally important to the, to the safety, to the long life, uh, and, and the good investment of the table you're about to purchase someplace. Uh, for instance, let's talk about the upholstery. Upholstery, there's a tremendous amount of science and chemistry going on in the upholstery. If the upholstery is, is, is really cheap, then it emits, it emits toxic fumes, which are, are just terrible for your health, going to give you cancer. It can create birth defects in children. It's totally illegal in certain states and in Europe. Uh, it, it's just bad. Additionally, cheap upholstery can uh, be of the type that reacts negatively with oil, whether it's vegetable oil, like massage oil, or even mineral oil. Oil has molecules in it that can destroy the upholstery fabric. Pretty soon it'll get cracky, it'll get hard, it'll just literally disintegrate if it's the cheap stuff. The good stuff, it doesn't stay stable for, for years and years and years. That's what you want, that's what you expect, but you don't always get it. Uh, additionally, in the back of the upholstery is a backing. There's got to be a backing. Look at this. This is strong. This is str it's like a pair of Levi's that's laminated to the back of the upholstery. It helps keep the upholstery from, from puncturing, from tearing. It helps keep it looking new. Uh, you know, years after you've bought the table, the upholstery is really important. And here, something you surely can't see. This is important, and ours is the strongest. If you would trying to say what's the heart of your table, you might say it's the hinge, the hinge that holds it together here in the middle. All the weight is going down, and when the weight is going down, this is our hinge, by the way, when the weight is going down, like this pressing down, if it's a lot of weight, you know, our, our hinge just kind of, the more weight you got, the tighter it gets. It just grabs, and we got screws coming in this way, and screws coming in this way. Literally, the hinge of our table, the center of the table, is the strongest part of our table. But in other situations, it's the, it's the weakest part of the table. Look at this. If you take a micrometer, trust me, I've done this already, this steel is more than twice as thick as this steel. And by the way, size, you know, what, do you want this or do you want this to be in your table? Here's another thing that you can't tell when you're looking on the thumbnail of the website. I mean, it drives me crazy, but watch. Here's two knobs. This knob has a threaded insert. This is the business end of the knob. It's like a piece of aluminum foil in there with a couple of twists. I mean, this is going to strip, it's going to fall out, it's going to break, you know, and soon after you have the table, you know, essentially, if you don't have these knobs to hold your legs on, you know, you don't have a table. Here's an MHP knob. It comes in a couple different colors, but wait. Look at this felt pad, first of all. This felt pad, which we're the only ones who do this, this, when you tighten the knob, it keeps it from scratching the wood. I'm going to take off this felt pad and show you some more about the way this is made. I mean, this is not rehearsed, you know, doing as good as I can here. Please be patient. The point is, is that underneath this felt pad is a very thick piece of brass. It's not just thick, but it's deep. The threads are deep. This is the way it's supposed to be. This is never going to break. And this brass uh, threaded um, uh, sleeve is not merely pressed into the, to the part. It's over molded. It's part of the mold. And the machine that makes the whole thing, it's part of it. So we have the, the brass knob that's proper. 
It's expensive. It, it, we have this overmolded with very, very strong plastic resin. You know, there's thousands of different kinds of plastic. Some could be brittle, you know, et cetera. This is really hard, really strong. It will never break. And then over that, we have some really nice soft touch stuff molded over it. So it just kind of feels good. And you it's kind of feel good every time you have to adjust your table because it's just nice stuff. Many companies, though, who will say Recce Panel, I don't want to show the name of this company. Many companies that will say Recce Panel, they're making it out of one thickness of wood. Is this showing up on the camera? Can yeah. you see this? You don't, don't edit that out. I mean, I'm really. Can you see this? I mean, really, on a Recce Panel, do you want the thin one or did you want the thick one? We only make it one way. We only do it the right way. Um, Got to be careful. And you can't see it in a thumbnail. See this nice little uh, dense piece of rubber? Uh, this is something that nobody else, it's, it's rough, I tore it off a table. This is something that we put at the corner of the table, under the upholstery. You can't see it, but tell me, but I'll tell you, we are the only ones who do that. We put it under the, under the upholstery here in the corner because when you're handling the table, naturally you're bouncing it on the floor, you're dragging it, hitting it, you know, you're going back and forth. And so the upholstery often at the corners is a wear point. But in order to reduce that wear, we began years ago installing this piece of, of plastic at all four corners so that we uh, uh, increase the, uh, the beautiful life of your massage table. So here's a situation that you just can't see in a thumbnail. And what I'm going to show you now is against the law, actually, in the United States of America. Um, this foam, here's foam that is, uh, by law, should be not able to burn, okay? It's a law. You don't know what they're putting in the box. This is from, there's several brands of tables out there in the market, you see them online, and it burns, watch this. Go. Can you see this? This is just not legal. You don't want this. I'm going to put this. You can't even put it out. Okay. Here is foam from. This is this is legal foam. This will melt a little bit. It's going to smell, but it, it won't stay burn or or even get more burny. Come on. It doesn't smell great, but this is what the law says you should have. Melting foam, not burning foam. I want to go back to talking about uh, hinges again and hardware. In fact, all metal parts that are in uh, our mas uh, a massage table, any massage table. You've got various metal parts like hinges and you've got screws. Um, there's a lot of bad things that could be hiding there, or a lot of good things. So it's not just a matter of, of size and strength. It's uh, one, one item is a matter of how you go about plating these things. This is, is brightly plated, not necessarily for beauty, but if you don't plate this properly, then it's going to rust, it's going to corrode. And you know, when things like that happen, I mean, it's ugly, it's going to get on your fingers, but also it's going to weaken and it's going to break under stress, and tell me there's a lot of stress on a massage table. Um, to properly do this job, to plate screws and to plate metal parts like a hinge, you've got to clean it properly after it's formed. You know, there's a lot of oil going around in those machines, you know. Uh, and then, so you've got to clean it, then you've got to plate it, and you've got to plate it again. These are double plated, and they're cleaned properly before plating, because if you don't do that, then everything just comes off and goes to pot. So when you look at something, there's more to it and you don't want to buy something that's going to that it's going to be all rusty and junky and corroded and weak before you know it literally coming overseas uh, in in those salt water conditions sometimes if it's really bad uh, really not done right it'll be rusty by the time it gets here perhaps one month after it's made that's the truth i referred in my introductory uh, remarks uh, to the tests that we pass. Here's, here's some of them that we passed in the last year. Here's one. The test itself, 
could could make you sick. I mean, it's like 50, where's the page number? There's, there, there's over 60 pages here in this test. Te you know, just checking every little thing from the finish, from the humidity of the wood. I've got a humidity detector over there in my desk. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it, it's a high standard that we're caught, that we're forced to meet. And we, we uh, it, it was a real learning curve, but we're the only ones that have done that. And here is some of the stuff we have to go through. And if some little thing is wrong, we've got to do it again, period. So here's, here's another thing that I, I don't know what to do about some of the stuff, to tell you the truth. But if a, if a guy, uh, if a maker in his material, in his thumbnail details that you're reading online says two inches of foam, what would you expect? Would you expect two inches of foam? This one, I'm not mentioning the name, says two inches of foam in the material. I have the material right inside here. But if you go to measure it, it's really... You know, it's like a, like a millimeter over, over one and a half inches. It's not two inches. It's nowhere near two inches. It's a lie, period. And, and we don't do that. Something else, if you want to focus on this again, it's another branded table, but you've got that butt joint. There's no, no, no dovetail, no strength, no furniture kind of construction there. And uh, maybe you can see it. You have no screws going into anything substantial. You've got these little brads. Maybe there's some glue in there. But this kind of construction, the butt joint held together by a few, basically they're straight staples, they're not even nails. A nail would be a blessing in this case, but these are just what they call spot nails in the, in the industry. And it's a, it's a pretty crummy kind of construction. So here's something else I'd like to talk about that you just take for granted, everything should be right. You see these handles here? The handles, you're picking it up. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of stress put on the handles, and you can see there's a washer and there's some kind of screw or bolt or whatever, right? Looks okay. By the way, this is an MH, uh, this is a master massage table. This is our table. So can you see in here? Can the camera get in here? This metal part, it's called a T-nut. It's not rocket science. T-nuts have been around forever. But the point is, it's a metal fastener so that when you screw in the handle for the the screw for the handle, it goes into a steel connection and never breaks, never comes out. It's not just a wood screw that they pop into, into the wood there. That would be bad. Here on this table, the handle looks similar. You got a, kind of some kind of screw. This looks kind of cheap, but, but it's a screw. If you feel here, I don't have a knife to cut this open with, but I'm feeling as hard as I can. There is no metal fastener here. This is just a wood screw going into wood, and it's going to tear out. Pretty soon you got one handle on your table, or maybe no handles on your table, because there's no metal-to-metal -metal fastener. It's a detail you can't see in the, in the uh, thumbnail, but it's there, and it's the difference between a table that's going to last you and be safe and convenient to use or not. Here's a face pillow. The main thing I want to talk about on this face pillow at this moment is that our, our major customers, the ones I referred to before who make me take all these tests and everything, they insist that we put every face pillow through a metal detector and, a, and an x-ray machine to be sure that there's no sewing needles, sewing machine needles, or broken parts of needles that got lost kind of in the foam or in the upholstery and that the needles are safe. Um, it doesn't happen too often. I guess statistically in history it can happen. I don't remember if it even ever happened. But they make us do it, and um, I don't think anybody else goes through that kind of testing.